Come, Lord Jesus, Jesus be, be our guest. Let these gifts us in Amen. Amen. Well, we're Clark and Diane Gradberg, Fergus Falls, Minnesota. Um, we've lived out here uh, about 15 and a half years now. Diane homeschools our kids. I work in town of Fergus Falls for a friend of mine. Um, we live out in the country here in 10 acres. We have six children. Sorry. David, our oldest, who was killed last fall. The sheriff said, you know, you have a son, David Gropberg, in Waco, Texas. And we both said yes. And they said they got a call from the Waco Police Department. They said he was involved in a bicycle accident. And he was deceased. News has a parent you never want to hear. So as I'm holding Diane, all I could think of was, God is good. God is good. And David is with God. And both of us just kept looking at each other and saying that God is good. He is with us and David is with him. We have been Christians our entire lives. Um, neither one of us has ever felt the presence of the Lord like we did that mm -hmm. first couple days in our living room. Um, just God moved in with us. You know, we, we invited him in. And he was there, and the presence of the Lord was it, was, it was amazing. And one of the things that I've said, I said that first night and ever since then, is I've never felt so completely empty and yet so completely full all at the same time. And only God can give that. This was David's uniform that was presented to us um, during homecoming. So he was in the marching band, and when they gave it to us, we didn't really have anywhere to put it. So Clark and I kind of talked about it and we decided we'd finish the attic. <laughs> David had always wanted us to finish the attic and recognize we just couldn't afford it. We had other things going on. And he said, when I'm out of school and I get a job, I'll pay for you to finish the attic. Well, David just, he was energetic. He pushed really hard to do something. Anything he wanted to happen seemed to happen, even if I said no. He loved rhetoric. He loved logic and put the two together to defeat me. He was whimsical and he was fun. He never had a bad day. He was happy all the time. You know, it was just fun to be around. He was intense. He liked to read, but he really liked to talk. So he'd read something and then he wanted to talk about it. He, he was a Christian and God was, was primarily he was the most important thing in his life. I mean, to some degree we taught him that, but I think at a certain point he took it on as his own, and then uh, God took him into his hands, and David grew in his knowledge of the Lord because David chose to. I had sent his ACT scores to Baylor and a few other schools, but we hadn't applied there. And then Baylor contacted us. I really felt that the Lord was saying, you need to look into this. I came home and David looked at me and said, Dad, you need to tell Mother that I'm not going to Baylor and that this writing this essay is pointless. He was tired of writing essays. And I looked at him and I said, David, she's your mother. And God has not released her from Baylor yet. So you need <laughs> to write the essay out of respect for yeah. your mother. Yeah. <laughs> He said, well, when he said, when can I be done writing essays? I said, when the Lord releases me. <laughs> <laughs> and he did it. He did it. So we sat down and we talked about the community at Baylor that we saw, that we knew that Tom Hibbs was really behind, especially in the honors program um, starting. And I said to David, I said, here's the, here's the thing, buddy. I said, with the community that's at Baylor um, in, the, in the honors program, I said, that is who you are. 
David was very family driven. I mean, he loved family. He wanted us to have 12 kids. I mean, he pushed, I mean, that's just the way he is. He loved people. And yeah, and he, he loved it. He talked about what he was learning, what he was doing, loving the community and loving to be in a learning environment and feeling like he was being challenged, but he was being encouraged in his faith. And it was really everything that I had hoped it would be. We were sitting probably about an hour into it and I looked at Diane and I started crying all afresh and just and I said we've lost our Baylor family. So I'm sitting there just in tears and my phone rings and it's Chaplain Burleson from Baylor by eight or nine o'clock in the morning. Chaplain Burleson, Dr. Odajima, Dr. Tran called you know, to, to share their condolences with us. But the thing that amazed me, each one of them said, we are so sorry. There is a black hole at Baylor here that cannot be filled right now. I mean, there's 16,000 students at Baylor University. How, how big of a hole can there be? Uh, well, that was, the, that was pretty much the beginning of finding out David had a Baylor family that was pulling us in and taking care of us. Baylor had this memorial service. We didn't know any of these people. And they planned this whole service, Dr. Odejima speaking, and we're sitting there thinking, well, you knew him so well. How did you know him so well? And he talked about him as if it really mattered. He really mattered. And it really mattered that he was gone. And I thought, yes, that's such a statement of life that life matters and David's life mattered. And the whole memorial service went in a way of hope and the hope of the resurrection. And I thought, these people are Christians. This isn't just a place where we say, yeah, we're, you know, it's a Christian university. No, these people are living the gospel and they share the gospel with us in our deepest need. And, you know, as I've, as we've gone through this, I really realized that when you grieve, you need comfort, and you, then you need hope, and you need joy to return you know, to your life. And they really gave us comfort because they really cared. But then they spoke of hope, that this is not the end. David's life is not over. He lives in God, and, and, and we have the hope of the resurrection. And then as we move forward, Baylor's continued just to begin to bring us joy. The honors kids who had a big get together where they shared stories about David and we laughed and we cried, I'm sure. It was such a special time. These people really cared and they, show, they shared these beautiful stories about David. They really cared. We've had three of the kids come visit. We, have, we don't know how many more coming later and we've started to enter into their lives and I thought, you know, the Lord is restoring joy to us through Baylor kids. These, what, 20, 21 year old kids were entering into their lives and we're accepting the Lord's joy through these kids. And I keep thinking, what is this place? What is this place that takes such good care of us and is so very Christian and has kids like this? We lost one kid and gained 20.
We miss them. Yeah, we miss them. And I, I hope that I, through our experience that maybe other people can see that the, the gospel is such a beautiful story and that there is hope for us and there's healing. And it doesn't mean that your grief goes away. No. But that God moves in and he grieves with us and God has grieved too. Before this happened, I wouldn't have told you. I'd be mad, I'd be angry, I would hunt the guy down. That hasn't been the case at all. We hope that that individual finds the Lord through this, that this person gets to know the same Jesus that David knew, and the, and the fullness of love that God has. I mean, that's ultimately what we hope for.